Hello guys, I'm Orbator and as you can guess we are going to Tylo. Well not entirely in this mission, well in this video not mission, but we will in the mission. As you can see we're going to take a rover and it's supposed to be a racing sports rover. You can see we're using the cockpit for one of the space planes and I thought this was kind of cool. And I'm just testing what happens if you tip this over, will it be bomb proof, will it explode if we drive it too fast? Obviously the girders may not take that much of a hit, however the wheels and the cockpit seem to be protecting the girders themselves, so I think this is a great design, however it has the possibility of flipping over and with the reaction wheels of the cockpit you're unable to turn it upside down, uh, the right way up. So we've added a reaction wheel on the back. And now let's go and test that. Let's see if we can flip it over and see if that reaction wheel will survive. We've got batteries on there. And I've also added some thermal lithic uh, uh, generator things. So the turbos may turn green while operating this thing. Okay, so that we saw that the reaction wheel explodes. We've added some girders or uh, what do you call them things? Girders? I think they are girders. I forget the names of some of these things and that will protect the rover and they seem to work quite well especially with mech jump testing it but as you can see we are launching the rover on its way the idea being that we'll launch the rover ahead of mission we'll send it down land it on Tylo one of the moons of Jewel by the way and then we'll send the Kerbal separately this is actually 40 days ahead of the launch window for the other mission or for, for the Kerbal transfers for the lander and the transfer stage and also I'm testing out a new mod called time control this will give us a fast forward hyper speed where physics acceleration and super duper rail on rails acceleration and it also has a slow mode which I think we'll play around with at some point Anyway, realizing this, I turn the RCS on, deploy the fairings to make it a bit easier to turn, and no, we have a failure. Houston, we have a problem, or KRC, we have a problem. Well, I think it's time to put out slow mode modes, uh, that time warp slow mode, slow mode mode, whatever, <laughs> into action. Okay, so let's do the physics accelerate the acceleration. Deploy the fairing. Let's observe what happens. It needs to be a bit faster than that. So upon this investigation, we found that the girders that we were using to support the top load from the lower tanks were clipping and then colliding with the tank which was further down the stack. So what do we do? We added an interstage. An empty space within the rocket. We could have had an extra fuel tank, in fact, but nah, bugger it. Need the stage is much better. It also means that we still have the right amount of Delta V for the mission. Okay, also in testing, which I've found with my last rovers and everything. Every time we were firing the transfer stage engines, it was eating up the fuel in the landers, so then I'd have to refuel them. But however, this appears to be working fine, so let's go and launch them. First up into space is the lander itself. As you can see we have this huge bulbous uh, <laughs> extremity on the top of the rocket, which is probably not that aerodynamic, I have to say. However, I do love launching huge things into space. Don't mention that to everyone. <laughs> it does sound rude though, doesn't it? So anyway, from these awesome shots we find that something explodes. However, the engine survives so we can continue with this mission. I always like to sort of like test everything, but not everything works out fine. I'll have to redefine these launchers because sometimes these separatrons don't separate fast enough. So then one of the parts is normally the decoupler part that are on that gets destroyed upon separation. However, now and again, I have had my engines ripped off, which is not fun, especially if you're trying to record these, you don't have much time in the evening and you want to get it into space. Ah, okay. <laughs> anyway, the separation of the fairing occurred correctly. As you can see, I'm gonna add this interstage into every launch vehicle that I use with this design. Especially with fairings. Hopefully it's a bug and they fixed it in the latest version. Talking about the latest version, you'd be happy to know that the 
Red Shell has been removed. If you're not sure what I'm on about, Red Shell was a sort of like uh, a program which could transfer data that Care Squad used and basically the story is that Squad, as any company, collects data so they know that the usage of their product. Perhaps someone watched a video, clicked on by KSP and then they collect the data. Oh, this guy collected PSP and oh, look, he's playing the game. But they don't normally collect you data like your name, your address, what websites you went to. I don't think that is the way that worked. However, Take Two were not happy with their uh, the data collection. So what they did was ask the Squad to, you know, improve upon it, and they used it. Uh, Red Shell program, which people called out as spyware, which is not really spyware. They just state in the EULA that they can collect this data, and it's not all from the game. It's just the standard EULA that is given out with the games and stuff. They're not the only company who do this. However, I was a bit miffed about them running a program in the background to collect data, and I trust Squad, I'm not sure about Take-Two, that is why I was concerned. However, they have removed it from the latest patch of KSP, so you can, you can rest sure about it that Squad aren't misusing the data. I don't think Take-Two want to either, they just want to see the usage of the game and how it is selling and stuff like that. Anyway, that aside... We have launched our transfer stage. This is basically the stage that we use to transfer a craft across. And I've fixed the space probes. You can see under the four arms that we have little things protruding from them. They, under those fairings, there are space probes. And the idea of the space probes is that we can release them as we're getting into orbit around Jewel. We can set them on different courses. Perhaps we can do a moon flybys. Perhaps we can do it in weird sort of like polar orbits of Jewel that you can scan. But their main job is to transmit data back to Kerbin, or at least that's the story. They don't actually need them, but however, I thought they'd be a great addition. Okay, docking this thing took hours. In fact, I think it took me best part of an yeah one hour. <laughs> I was going to say two hours, but no. In fact, it took me one hour. It just that combined with the launching of them, the test and the explosions that ensue because it's Kerbal Space Program, then yes, this takes ages. And the reason why this took longer is because they had to align them. They were, they were approaching each other at really slow rates. However, as you see, even slow rates, these things bounce apart. Anyway, now I'm using Hyper Warp in the post-processing of this video to speed things up because everything was going really slow at this point. Again, we have a bounce. Take it a bit slower. And they're not connecting. The only way to do this is take control of the transfer ship, just shimmy it across a bit, and hey presto, the magnetics take over. Awesome stuff. Now the mission is towards Jewel. As you can see on the map, we have a space plane on the way. Well, it's not actually a space plane, it's the rover. It's because we use a space plane cockpit that the rover, it shows a space plane. And perhaps I should have added engines on it to make it fly. No, 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 no. Not on Tylo. Tylo has high gravity. It is in fact one of the moons around uh, Jewel that I have not returned from. And yes, by the way, I'm using MechJab to transfer this across. The scripting that I created for it to separate everything at the right time as the fuels run out did not work. And at one point I was thinking I could transfer fuel from the rear engine that is firing from the lander and transfer it to the main stage. However, I sort of got lazy and it couldn't be bothered to transfer the fuel across from the rear stages. That would mean that we'd have more Delta V as we left Kerbin. But that aside, at least we have the thrust to weight ratio to get there because for some reason MechJeb decided to do this burn a little late. So then we had to do correction work because you can see we're intercepting man. That is not good because although the man can give you a bit of a gravity boost, it's normally not the best situation to use to get into interplanetary space because you have to precisely work out how much speed you can get for the man 
and normally it's better to use the all birth effect when you're close to curbing. I don't normally use it because patch conics don't show a proper pro you know, use for it. Anyway, here we are. We have to do one more final maneuver, and that is the correction burn to make sure that we get close to Jewel and able to get into a flat orbit. Otherwise, if we come overhead, that means we're going to have to do some clever maneuvering, clever gravity, show, uh, gravity sink shots to get into the proper orbit. Okay, I think that's the right height. Just a short burn to get into orbit now. However, this is the end of this episode. Let me know if you enjoy this. Perhaps I show a bit more of the building and a bit more of a development of the craft like I did with the rover. Okay, now we are racing towards Tylo. Hit that like button because I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer.